Caesar and Tower, men with a mission. The American Gladiators stand ready to take on America's toughest contenders. Mike Adamley along with Larry Zaka for another second half semi-final. We're gonna start things off with Breakthrough and Conquer. One part football, one part wrestling. The contenders bent on getting by our Gladiators. A look at one of our contestants, 31-year-old Kevin Weber from Naperville, Illinois. An outstanding collegiate wrestler during his days as an Indiana Hoosier. And now he's going to have to face off against Tower and then Laser in the Conquer Ring. Ready. And that, my friends, is a very dangerous ready, daily ready. double. And Kevin has yet to score in his two oh. previous encounters. Tell you what, Kevin was very close to scoring, put a good move on Tower. Tower recovered well, gave him a great push. Looked appeared from here at least that Kevin might have broken the plane of the end zone, but our side judge was right there and made the call. Again, Kevin with the wrestling background, co-captain of his Indiana University wrestling team, but he's tying up with a bad, bad hombre in there. Five seconds to go. Kevin with a good technique. Laser with Look all the strength, a great reverse by Laser. Bails over Kevin's head to avoid the takedown. Laser demonstrating his many skills in the conquer ring, showing once again he's not afraid to throw his body in order to win. You don't want to let those guys get close in that conquering, do you? Oh, no way, I tell you, they, these are such great competitors. When they're in that conquering, they get, they get a hold of you that you're gonna go out, so you gotta be moving, be fast, and just kick some butt. The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents the American Gladiators. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley along with Larry Zonka. Today we conclude our second half semifinal round. We've already seen Kevin Weber's valiant but futile attempt in Breakthrough and Conquer, and now it's his opponent's turn. There he is, Carlton Fluker, Larry. I'll tell you what, he's got his work cut out for him. He's staring into about 550 pounds of gladiators. What a tough way to start the day. Carlton just 140 pounds, but his background as a gymnastics instructor has paid dividends in this competition. He's extremely quick. Power pushes him out. Power does a great job of keeping his balance, not letting that move disturb him. Now, Carlton really has his work cut out for him in the conquer ring with laser. Giving away nearly 100 pounds. But in the second round, you might remember that Carlton was able to take Tower oh. out. <laughs> Look how fast Laser recovers from those takedown attempts. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Laser and Tower give the little man a big hug. But that's all they give him. Because Carlton walks away with no points. Excellent job by Laser. Laser again doing what he has to do in order to win. Hard to believe that he'd go up that high and leap over top of Carlton when he can just throw him to the side, much like a flea. And now our women are up next. And Katie Ramsey will be first. And Katie, 22 years old, a sales clerk from Davis, California. She's also pursuing a firefighting career. To get to this semifinal round, she beat Melissa Lieberman in the second round. In breakthrough, she'll have to squeeze by Electra somehow and then take on Sky in that conquering. Again, a chance for contender to pick up 10 points. Contender ready! Ready to ready! Electra says, I'm not necessarily biting on it. She stayed right there, but it oh. Well, she didn't get the gladiator to commit, but she still managed to slip by with a nice head fake. Electra had her hands on Katie, but failed to wrap her up. It, Katie squeezed by and's got five points now. Katie says she's gonna try to go high on Sky, which ought to be pretty easy, and pull her out of the ring. If that doesn't work, then she's gonna play it by ear. See, there's the pull. <laughs> no way, Sky says, stay away, my friend. Sky dropping down to one knee to keep Katie off her body. Maybe going high was not a good idea after all. No points there, but Katie does pick up five and break through and conquer and takes the early lead. 
Very sympathetic with Katie. How do you attack someone that's so much taller? Katie tries everything, even pulling Sky out by the hand. Simply won't work. Sky says, hey, go away, kid. Don't bother me. Well, Lisa Wojciechowski will try to match Katie Ramsey's five points. Lisa, 29 years old from Laguna Hills, California. An aspiring screenplay writer, also training to become a firefighter. Contender ready! Ready, ready! Electra still stinging from that defeat at the ha hands of Katie. There's a better job, gets her out of bounds. Nice move by Electra. Kept her feet under. A little bit like a linebacker. Good that job. is the first. That is the first time, incidentally, Larry, that Lisa has not scored points in Breakthrough and Conquer. Let's see what happens here in the Conquer ring. Lisa paying attention. To what happened? Well, Katie tries a fake on Sky and almost had it work. Seven seconds <laughs> remain. How do you attack this mountain? Well, well that's one way. You get her high and around the neck, maybe. But time expires. That is it. No points for Lisa Wojciechowski. And Sky is pumped. And well, she should be, Mike. She takes on Wojo at her own game, outpowers Wojo. Wojo jumping, ready to attack anywhere. But here, Sky just uses raw power to force her back to the center of the ring. Quickly now, we turn to the men. Powerball, the name of this game, event number two. Kevin Weber, Carlton Fluker, no points as of yet. They'll face off against Viper, Turbo, and Laser. 45 seconds to time limit. A goal in the center cylinder worth five. Goals in the outer cylinder is worth three. And Powerball is brought to you by Nintendo. Makers of Super NES, now you're playing with power. Super power. Carlton left Turbo dead in his tracks and loses his shirt at the hands of Laser. 30 seconds to go. This man almost Carl impossible to knock off balance. He said he's a floater. We have a disqualification against Viper around the head. 20 seconds remaining. Two contenders, two gladiators, 20 seconds. No doubt about it, Viper's up high, way too high, and he's disqualified. So for the final 20 seconds, it'll be shirts and skins. Carlton the skins, Kevin Weber the shirts. Laser and Turbo forced to go one on one. Carlton like a little water bug out there. Carlton with a great fakes, floats. Kevin has another nice one, too. Time winding down. Center Kevin, pod for Kevin with that great move. Did he count it? Yes. That last goal in the center cylinder, a very important one for Kevin Weber. As they turn on the power against Turbo, Laser, and Viper. Carlton's quickness completely frustrated the Gladiators. A paralyzing move there on Turbo. And right here, we see the incredible athletic powers of one Carlton Fluker. Even with his shirt at his knees, he's able to come away with a score. This kid's something else. He's even able to score with his old hop, skip, and jump technique. That's incredible. And I'll tell you what, Larry, Kevin Weber, almost Carlton's equal. He scored 20 points in this match, making many of the same kind of Carlton-esque moves. Here he heads to the center cylinder for the easy five. Turbo knows he's been outfoxed, and that doesn't happen very often in Powerball. Diamond, Storm, Electra, they're ready for Powerball against Lisa Wojciechowski and Katie Ramsey. Katie with a five, nothing lead coming in. Contenders ready! Ready, it is ready! Much like Kevin and Clifton, this will be the glider against the slugger. Katie the glider. Wojo the slugger, and the slugger scored. Wojo, bad move. Tries to go for that double covered cylinder, which he had an open cylinder on the other side of the court. She's got to get her head on it. Katie's still very smooth. She scores again. 20 seconds remain. Oh, Storm getting up dangerously high. Wojo. 
Katie with another nice move. Ditto for Wojo. We're under 10 seconds. Oh. Four seconds to go. Katie looking for one Look last shot, and time expires. Wojo seizing that opportunity when Katie turned back. Open pod, she scores right at the buzzer. 14-12, the final count. Storm adjusting her gear. Katie Ramsey, long legs, a very graceful stride, and some excellent moves. One there past Storm. This time she gets Electra going in the wrong direction and scores easily. Wojo with a little more direct approach. She takes the Gladiators on one at a time or even two at a time, but scores. So certainly Katie and Wojo have served notice to the Gladiators that they're gonna be forces to be reckoned with here in this second half semifinal. And Katie's experience in basic training looks like it's paid dividends. Easy shutout. That's what it's going to be like. Viper and Tower hoping to be a titanic tandem in atmosphere. Can Carlton Fluker and Kevin Weber stay out of harm's way in this 60-second game where they try to score as many times as they can? There's a scoring rundown after two events. Carlton with the great quickness has been a very elusive contender this afternoon for... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Viper again endears himself to our crowd. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! <laughs> Both contenders decide to crisscross, and that didn't pay any dividends. Kevin just misses in pod number two. Viper knocks Carlton out of pod number three, but Kevin scores and one. Down with a little breakaway. Here comes Kevin in pod number two. Can he get it in? No. 25 seconds left. And look out. <laughs> a little help from Viper. Permits Kevin to settle in and take that score. Carlton misses in two, he's rolling towards one. 12 seconds remain, he can't get it in there. Kevin, piling up the points here in Atmosphere. Down to the wire, can he put it in in two? Yes. Boy, and that's it. Four goals for Kevin Weber, a total of 12 points. Carlton Fluker not having such a good day. He just couldn't seem to get that thing rolling, and once he did, he couldn't seem to quite get it in the pod, thanks to a little extra help from a gladiator. Kevin, on the other hand, well, he's scoring at will. The interesting thing about him is he never stops moving. He keeps the atmosphere rolling the entire time and also has the ability to change the momentum in order to get into that scoring pod. In the women's competition, Katie Ramsey has a two-point lead over Lisa Wojciechowski after two events. One of the gladiators, they'll be facing Zapp, who's getting to be an old hand in this event. In her fourth season, Zapp is a hardened veteran gladiator. But if you look closely, you're actually seeing the new Zapp. The old Zapp was built for power, weighing close to 170 pounds. But the new one is a leaner, meaner, and some say a more curvy Zapp. When you're that heavy, you're a little bit slower. So I tried to, to get my body a little bit toner and look a little bit more, I guess, feminine with curves, but muscle. Her seniority in Gladiator Arena has built her a strong fan following and earned her respect from teammates. Everybody knows me, so it's a really a nice feeling when you come out and people have signs and they cheer and the kids know you by name. And it's also nice because I get to teach the other Gladiators some of my tricks. But there's no trick to Zap's success. It's just strength, speed, and smarts. I know my job. Um, I think I do it really well. I know the games. I use my head a lot now instead of the brawn. Well, Zap certainly has taught some of her tricks to her partner, Sky, who barely fits in that atmosphere at six feet, three inches tall. Katie with a two-point lead, as we mentioned. 
Lisa will be in the red atmosphere. Wojciechowski, Lisa Wojciechowski in the yellow Get one. Ready. Yeah. Ready. Ready. Here come Zap and Sky. Zap just grazes Katie Ramsey, and she's got a breakaway towards pod number one. And Wojo in pod number four oh. can't get it to go, but Katie does. Katie with a nice spin-off move, glancing off. And now she's got another breakaway at two, and oh, just missed the scoring sensor. 30 seconds. Oh. Katie's gonna have a nice pick move here if she can get clear. Well, Lisa's headed the wrong way, heads her off. All three of them heading for that scoring pod. Here comes Katie again. She can get that thing turned. She'll get it in one. She does as Wojo scored in three. Now Wojo in four. Yeah. It's all tied up. Five seconds to go. Katie with one last chance. She's got it. And Katie Ramsey, three goals, a total of nine points. Lisa Wojciechowski, two goals, a total of six points. Mike, both of our contenders had to earn every point. Katie coming out on top, but Wojo certainly no slouch. She was right in there. She got a little head knocking here at the hands of Sky. And then Katie taking the old roundhouse effect, comes off a pick, gets into the clear and takes advantage of it. Controls that atmosphere and rolls right in, picking up those valuable points. So Lisa down by five, but not out of it. Here's a woman who steeled herself for this competition and honed her mental focus by waxing boats eight hours a day. We'll be back. Mike Adam and Larry Zonka back with you at Gladiator Arena. You are looking at Diamond. Thumbs up for Assault. Katie Ramsey up first. She has a five point lead on Lisa Wojciechowski. Contenders can earn individual points in this event by successfully firing weapons at one of five scoring stations, but their ultimate goal to hit that target located above the Gladiator. That is certainly no easy thing to do as Katie Ramsey gets her concentration exactly where she wants it. Gladiator. Diamond, one of our very best gladiators at this event. Katie Ramsey on her way. Katie, much like Carlton Fluker in the men's competition. Very fluid, very smooth in her gait. 40 seconds remaining. Diamond biding her time. Mm -hmm. Left of the target. Remember, both of our contenders vying for a berth in next week's second half finals where they'll meet Cheryl Wilson. 15 seconds remaining. Katie setting herself. Ooh. Two final chances at station number five. Diamond doesn't give her that chance. Give Katie Ramsey four points. Nice effort by Katie, but just another day at the office for Diamond. Wojo up next, and that Lisa has made it to the second half semifinals, a tribute not to just her athletic talent, but also the spirit of her late mother, Ora Lee, whose memory has been Lisa's inspiration. I have to just listen to my heart, and I know she's in there, and she's gonna help me climb up that wall and, <laughs> and um, do everything that I need to do to my best ability, and hopefully go out there and just give it all I have and win. Not much time for reflection in this event. Those tennis balls go whizzing over your head at over 100 miles an hour. Your life passes before your eyes. Diamond looking to make it two for two. Lisa thought she was hit momentarily. Diamond cool and calm. Raise it up a little bit. Diamond's going to pick up on her rhythm. 30 seconds remain. High. 
Now she's got to stop and go. Stop, go, and dodge, rather. This is a different technique, standing straight up behind station number four. She's still alive. Ten seconds left, two final chances. She was a pretty good softball player in high school back in Edison, Four New seconds. Jersey. The arm failed her there. Time winding down. Oh. I don't think she crossed the finish line. She didn't, but give Lisa Wojciechowski five points. And now she trails 27-23 after four events. Wojo smiling and happy just to make it through the entire course. She almost makes it to the finish line. Watch the clock on the right. She's just a step too late. All right, the men are next. And with all respect to Red Grange, the Pro Football Hall of Famer, the Galloping Ghost, this is our version of the Galloping Ghost. Carlton Fluker going against Turbo. Carlton, tough to hit. Very tough to hit. He's so quick. Having that much quickness can almost get you in trouble in assault. One good thing that Carlton does, constant eye contact with the gladiator. Uh, <laughs> way low. Carlton way low, almost destroyed one of the other weapons. Hit the crossbow. Down to 30 seconds. No idea where that was going. 25. Another near miss. Down to 15, two final chances here at station number five. At the corner. And Carlton does somersault. a little somersault. Too bad we don't award style points here. Carlton does get the bonus point and a total of six. So he has closed the gap with Kevin Weber to just four points, but Kevin yet to come, and Turbo wants him and says, Kevin, you are going down. This man rock climbs, bungee jumps, runs marathons. This will be interesting. It was not one of the events in his preliminary round nor his second round competition. Man who has a tattoo of the Tasmanian devil as to his right leg, making like a whirling dervish as he goes from station to station. Literally high step into that last tennis ball. Oh man, Turbo's coming close. So is Kevin for that matter. <laughs> 20 ready. seconds left. Kevin's gonna take station four and push it all the way over to station five. Turbo's only got three shots left. Come on, Kevin. He's a soft he and he gets it. He's got it. And Ten down. points. And Whoa. boy, did he need those points. The 10 gives him a total of 42. Kevin keeping his cool under the gun, bobbing, ducking, weaving, then coming up with that big left-handed throw that nets him 10 points. But our contenders are only halfway home. Four events to go, Skytrack next. Our female contenders are all harnessed in and ready for the upside down race of their lives in event number five here. Skytrack will have to travel end to end across this Velcro surface and try to beat our American Gladiator. In lane one, it'll be Lisa Wojciechowski. Lane two, our Gladiator Storm. And in lane three, Katie Ramsey. Both these women have competed in Sky Track before, but they have yet to win. Storm undefeated her best time, 38 seconds. Again, if the contender can beat the Gladiator across the finish line, that's worth 10 points. If both contenders do that job, the second one across will get five. And they're off. The first to reach that second turn was Lisa Wojciechowski, but Storm regains the lead. Katie doing a good job catching up. She's not using her feet as much as she should. Storm the first to reach the turnaround. Now trying to pull away. 
But Katie Ramsey hanging in there. Katie with her feet all over the map, but maintaining her speed, good control in the turns. This could be close. Katie Ramsey from Davis County. Oh, she's oh, spun oh, out. Who got so many? Larry Thompson right there. Katie Ramsey wins the race. She gets the 10 points as she edges out Storm at the finish line. Katie with a good control. Katie with a big lead. But Katie makes a mistake right here, spins out, and then is just barely able to beat Storm across that finish line. The men are up and in lane three, Kevin Weber. Other contenders have taken to calling him Wild Thing. Well, there's a reason. To say Kevin Weber is different, it's an understatement. My idea of risk taking is it's part of being alive. To sit home in your house every day and not get out and do anything different, I don't think uh, you're living that way. It seems all of Kevin's recreational activities carry a sense of danger. He's an expert rock climber. And when you add that to skydiving, marathon running, and a Golden Glove Boxing Championship, you get a good idea what makes Kevin tick. You face the fear that's within you to, to take on something that's, uh, that may be out of reach. And to do something like that on a regular basis is kind of a, a gut check to see if you, you can still do it. Well, I know Skytrack is a gut check for a lot of our contenders and gladiators alike in that it upsets the stomach being upside down like this. Carlton will be in lane three, Turbo in lane two, Kevin in lane one. Turbo has won every time he's been in Skytrack. And here they go. Oh, well, that leapfrog technique when he utilizes his feet every so often. And it is mighty close as they reach the turnaround. Turbo and Carlton side by side. Kevin had a little trouble getting his light to flash there at the halfway point, cost him a second or so. Carlton now springing away, but remember he's on that outside line. Here comes Turbo. He can't catch Carlton Fluker. Carlton gets the 10. His time, 34 seconds. He picks up the 10 points. A very close race right to the halfway mark as all three men are in close proximity. Carlton opens up that bunny hop unorthodox style of his and starts to take a lead, utilizing hands and feet. Brings himself right into the finish line first, picking up that full complement of points. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> Their names, Viper and Havoc, they will hope to become blocks of granite up there on the platform as they're about to test themselves against our two contenders in human cannonball. Right now, Kevin Weber with a 42-38 lead over Carlton Fluker. Again, both men get two swings in this event. Both men have to double up in that cannonball position, draw a straight line, get the maximum amount of momentum and impact out of their bodies against those gladiators. Oh, close, but no cigar. Kevin turned around and looked. He couldn't believe that Havoc didn't go anywhere. But they're still standing. Havoc's got to be real proud of that performance. We see it from yet another angle. Havoc stepping in. And look at that. Ballet dancer would be proud of that move. Second swing coming up. They flip flop gladiators. Kevin gets Viper. Carlton draws Havoc this time. Kevin looking to pile up as many points as he can. Watch the form of the gladiators as they step into the impact. Carlton. Oh, Havoc stepped into Carlton and remained there. Kevin is able to take Viper down. He picks up five points, but Kevin may have had the win knocked out of him. Maybe his teeth are gone. And again, taking another look at it, it appears that perhaps Kevin's right hip collided with the. Uh, Viper's left knee. It'd be tough to tell from this angle. 
You can see Kevin Wentz in pain. You can see Viper wiped off the platform. Well, in the women's competition, Katie Ramsey enjoys a fairly comfortable 14-point lead on Lisa Wojciechowski. Wojo needs, she needs to go. If she's going to get back in this thing. For the Gladiators, it'll be Storm and Sky. And Sky happens to be the subject of our Ask a Gladiator segment. Abby Snyder of Cooper City, Florida writes, Dear Sky, how do you find guys to date who can handle your height? Oh, Abby. Um... With, with regard to men handling my height, one of the things that men find most attractive about me is my height and the way I carry myself and the fact that I enjoy being tall. Um, I've never dated anyone my height. I've always dated um, men much shorter than myself. And as a matter of fact, the gentleman I'm dating now is only five foot 10 when he blow dries his hair, of course. <laughs> Well, if you'd like to write to Sky or any of our other gladiators, write to Ask a Gladiator, 10203 Santa Monica Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 967. The first of two swings coming up. Wojo draws Storm and Katie gets Sky. They're on their way. Whoa, man, Sky went flying. Katie really delivered a shot. Katie with a good tuck. Swings in, gets a little underneath of Sky, and off she goes. This is one event where Sky's height is a disadvantage. Now they switch gladiators. Contenders ready! Katie's ready, slim, ready. petite. Make no mistake about it. This gal packs a wallop, gets a good high swing. Oh, and down they both go. Wojo led with her head there. Picture perfect other than the contact by Wojo. Got her head down. Stoked herself a little bit. I'm sure she'll shake it off. Well, even though Sky goes flying here, Larry, this swing by Lisa Wojciechowski is not going to count. That move is illegal. You are not allowed to lead with your head, and the rule was put in to protect the contenders because you can severely sprain your neck doing that. Here's the ruling. In that last cannonball swing, we have disqualification of contender Lisa Wojciechowski for leading with her head into the Gladiator. No points award. Lisa Wojciechowski, no points. Again, a referee making that ruling for the benefit of the contenders. No sense sustaining a serious injury. Well, up next, crunch time, the joust. Event number seven here at Gladiator Arena, and let's get physical, because it's crunch time to joust. Lisa Wojciechowski up first, and she draws Storm, who is unscathed in this event. No one has taken the measure of Storm, and there's the deficit that Lisa faces with Katie Ramsey. She needs the 10. She's got 30 seconds to do it. Absorbed a few blows, now she, ah, she got her off balance. <laughs> she just faded to the back of the platform and let Storm get off balance. Storm put her hand on Lisa's platform. The automatic disqualification. Wojo stays alive by picking up 10 points. Now Katie Ramsey, who lost to Storm in the first round. Again, we remind you that was Storm's first defeat. One, two, Katie ducks one, and Storm off balance again. And down she goes, holy cow, what is happening to the Gladiators today? <laughs> Great play by our contenders is exactly what's happened. See Katie pull that full 360, come back on the attack, catch a Storm off balance when Storm misses with that blow, and down comes Storm. Now, will the men be as successful as the women? Kevin Weber leads Carlton Fluker by nine. He goes up against Tower. Like Storm, he is undefeated in this event. Kevin, a chance for a little revenge. He lost to Tower in the second round. Tower wailing away. Little may be the key word. Kevin's blows all have to go uphill. Bobbing, weaving, 
this kid a former oh. Golden Gloves champion? Oh, oh, man. Man. Oh. Tower stun. Maybe Kevin is too. He pulled off the impossible. He's taking quite a licking, but he keeps on ticking. He comes up here, gets a little jab in, and throws Tower off balance. Two or three more little jabs, and off goes the big man. Ten points, Kevin. Now Carlton Fluker has a chance to do likewise. He, like Kevin, lost to Tower in the second round, too. You know, you know Tower is smoking, man. This ain't gonna last long, and I didn't think it would. Two seconds, Carlton goes down. So Kevin Weber will take a 19-point lead into the Eliminator. That good for a nine-and-a-half-second head start. Tower obviously steamed from the first go-around, decides to make short work of Carlton Fluker, and in fact does. And Larry, some of the hits we've seen here in the joust, just the culmination of a season full of high-speed collisions. And as you know, from time to time, we like to pay tribute to our big hitters. So without further ado, this installment of Zonka Zonks. Ah, oh, my favorite time. <laughs> Be aggressive, stand my line, and don't let anybody cross it. Stay balanced at all times and throw as many punches as I can in another opponent's face so he can't see. It's mine. Get out of here. You don't belong here. Stay alive. <laughs> One day I was cutting my hair. I said, I wonder what it looked like bald hair. And I always wanted to look like Mr. Clean, so I shaved it off, and I said, that's it. I got it. Both in our second half finals is at stake for our four contenders as they ready themselves for the Eliminator. In our women's competition, Davis, California's Katie Ramsey has been sensational, scoring in all seven events. As a result, she gets a 12-second head start on Lisa Wojciechowski. Now, the word quit is not in Wojo's vocabulary. Her will to win still burns bright, and right now she's with Larry at the start line. Wojo, 12-second deficit, tough to overcome. Do you still have that will to win? Well, I, Larry, I have a great support group of people who, um, from a class in, a class of kids in Hillside, New Jersey, Miss Davis class, who sent me cards and letters and said that I could do it. I have people on the stands from all over the country, my friends and family, who said I can do it. They never saw me quit ever, yeah. and yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give everything I have, and I'll see you at the finish line. Good enough. Good luck. Right, thank you. And you know, Larry tucked away in her heart and soul the spirit of her late mom, Ora Lee who has been with her every step of the way here at Gladiator Arena. But it is Katie Ramsey who gets the 12-second head start. On course for the Gladiators underneath the hand bike. It'll be Zap and Diamond. And down that final straightaway, there they are. And those blocking dummies are really boiling in the gauntlet. It's Electra and Sky. And the Eliminator is brought to you by Skittles Bite Size Candies. Also in Wildberry, Tart and Tangy, and Tropical. Ready! A long, long wait for Lisa Wojciechowski, Katie Ramsey. No problems with that incline treadmill. And no problems with the handbike. And no problems on that spinning cylinder. Wojo will have to turn on the afterburners. Katie Ramsey easily up that cargo net, down the zip line. <laughs> Fluid, graceful, just two of the adjectives that come to mind when you watch this woman participate. Weaves her way down that final straightaway, and it's Katie Ramsey who's moving on to our second half finals. Katie Ramsey, you've been perfect all day. You scored in all seven events, and uh, same kind of enthusiasm, same kind of technique in the Eliminator. 
That's right, um, I just really wanted to be smooth, consistent, and just not make any mistake. Smooth, consistent, and welcome to our second half finals, Gal. You're there. Thanks a lot, Larry. All right, Mike. And for Lisa Wojciechowski, the woman who drew her inspiration from her late mother, Ora Lee, no apologies necessary. You were terrific and have everything in the world to be proud of. Great match. Sorry, guys. Just didn't have today. On the men's side, Kevin Weber's toughness has given him a 19-point lead on Lansing, Michigan's Carlton Fluker. Now, Carlton has been behind before. Question is, can he come back from a nine and a half second deficit? If anyone's capable, it's certainly C. He's with Larry at the start line. Carlton, undoubtedly, the eliminator is your best event, but a nine and a half second deficit is a long time. Can you overcome it? I'm going to seriously try it. I mean, he's very good, very good, and I'm just going to have to burn rubber, really try. <laughs> well put. Good luck. <laughs> One thing in Carlton's favor, Larry, of all the contenders we have seen this year, no one has run the eliminator faster, but nine and a half seconds, that's an awful lot of ground to make up, and Kevin Weber is no slouch in this event either. The eliminator is a time for our gladiators to take a breather and hamming it up underneath the hand bike in the penalty pit, Viper and Laser, and down the final straightaway. Well, these guys actually have a job to do, Havoc and Turbo. Kevin pumping his way up that treadmill. Now watch here on the hand bike. Oh, he's nice and tight. He doesn't appear to be in any great pain. He's all the way across the spinning cylinder. Let's see what Carlton can do. What kind of finishing kick he has. It's pretty darn good, but so is Kevin. Kevin actually peeked down the cargo net to see where Carlton was. Kevin Weber, if he doesn't make a mistake, if he can get over this last wall, he's got it. Oh, yeah. He weaves his way down through the gauntlet. He crosses the finish line. Carlton closes the gap, but that nine and a half second head start just too much. It is Kevin Weber from Naperville, Illinois, moving on. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Kevin. I like you. Anybody can win when they're healthy. You're not exactly healthy right now. You got a sore rib, but you did a great job, man. Well, some people would say I'm not very healthy mentally either, but... <laughs> <laughs> that helps. <laughs> but we're having a good time. All these guys here have been great competitors, and to see how far we can go. How long this old body can hold together, you know what I mean, right? I know, those teeth are falling <laughs> out rapidly. Congratulations, and welcome to the finals. Thanks, buddy. All right, Mike? And Kevin's time, 37 seconds, good enough to hold off the speed of Carlton Fluke, who ran the Eliminator course in 33 seconds. Next week, our second half final, and we'll have all the exciting action. Until then, for Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Adamley. So long from Gladiator Arena. Champions will receive all expenses paid Club Med vacations. With over 100 villages worldwide, Club Med offers the perfect vacation for families, couples, and singles. This year, take home a Club Med vacation.